He was here in the Minnehaha County and City of Sioux Falls Planning Commission meetings. Uh, roll call vote for the county, Jeff Barth. Aye. Adam Morehauser. Present. Doug Odie. Aye. Mike Ralston. Here. Becky Randall. Here. Bonnie Duffy. City side. Thank you. Good evening, City Commissioners. We'll do a roll call on the city side as well. Commissioner Irvin. Yes. Commissioner Johnson. Yes. Commissioner Kittams. Yes. Commissioner Lukey. Here. Commissioner Nysis. Yes. Commissioner Paulson. Present. We have a quorum on the city side. Madam Chair. Just a point of information. I think we, since they're all on the phone also, we need to go identify ourselves who's speaking each time. So, uh, and this is Jeff. <laughs> Motion and second. Please state who you are. Good evening. I call to order this regular joint meeting of the Minnehaha County and Sioux Falls Planning Commissions. And I will begin with a few introductory comments. As a courtesy to everyone in the meeting room tonight, Please make sure that all cell phones are turned off. Please note that tonight's meeting, commission, planning commission meeting, will be recorded live and available for viewing by members of the public afterwards on the www.minnehahacounty.org site. In observance of the CDC guidelines for social distancing, tonight's meeting is taking place simultaneously within the county commission meeting room and virtually within a Zoom meeting room online. In the Zoom meeting room, each individual user on the line will be on mute to maintain communication clarity for everyone. Every item listed on the agenda will be read separately. If any member of the public wishes to be heard on an item, you may raise your hand while I read the item description. If hands are raised, we will follow our normal hearing procedure by requesting planning staff to present a report on each item and then request the petitioner to come to the podium and make a statement or answer any questions. Anyone from the audience wishing to address the item shall be recognized by planning staff in the order hands were raised. And state your name and address for the record. The Planning Commission meeting will then discuss the matter and take appropriate action. First item on the agenda is public input. Is there anyone who wishes to speak on an item that is not on the agenda? Please raise your hand, and if you are attending remotely, staff will call on you, and I'll meet you to, uh, to microphone for any comments. No hands are raised. Thanks, David. Item number one in the agenda is the minutes from the February 22nd Joint Planning Commission meeting. Are there any comments or changes to the minutes? This is Jeff. A motion to approve the minutes. Adam Morehauser, I'll second that. A motion is made and seconded to approve the minutes of the February 26th, 22nd meeting. Uh, roll call vote. Jeff? Aye. Adam? Aye. M Doug? Aye. Mike? Aye. And Becky? Aye. Approved on the county side. Commissioners, the uh, February 22nd minutes have been approved on the county side. Do I have a motion on the city side? Move to approve the minutes, Johnson. Luke, you second. Motion and a second. We'll also do a roll call vote. Commissioner Irvin? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Kittums? Yes. Commissioner Lukey? Yes. Commissioner Nysis? Yes. Commissioner Paulson? Commissioner Paulson? Yes. Uh, the minutes have been approved on the city side. Thank you. Okay, items number two through four are conditional use permits. Any final action taken on the conditional use permit tonight will take effect five working days following this meeting unless a written appeal of the Planning Commission's decision is filed in the Planning Office by Monday, March 29th at 5 p.m. In the event of an appeal, the decision will be referred to the Joint County Commission and City Council for a hearing on Tuesday, April 27th, 2021 at or after 5 p.m. That meeting is held in Carnegie Town Hall at 235 West 10th Street. 
Next, I will continue the description of item number two, and if anyone wishes to comment, now would be the time to raise your hand. Item number two is conditional use permit 21-24 to transfer one building eligibility from the west half, the north half, southwest quarter, there is an exception, the east 430 feet, and except the, four, the west 212 feet, the east 642 feet, and the exception of Track 1, Westwood Valley 2nd Edition, to the south half, the southwest quarter, another exception, R-1, and except Clients Track 1A and Track 2A, and except the east, 1,360 feet, and except Track 2, Westwood Valley 2nd Edition, all in Section 28, Township 101 North, Range 50 West. Petitioners Rick Dunlap, uh, this is about a half mile west of Sioux Falls. Kevin? Good evening. Kevin Hookman, County Planning Department. Uh, this item is a transfer of building eligibility, and I'll try to be quick with the, the staff report. Uh, in the transfer request is a move of building eligibility uh, from one property to an existing uh, former farmstead. Uh, the uh, staff, county staff and city planning staff are both recommending approval. Uh, the city staff uh, recommended in their comment letter that the, they wanted a condition to access the driveway off of Lena Drive rather than the highway. Um, as you can see, the, there's an existing driveway in the farmstead that comes off of 41st Street. Uh, that can cause problems if it, uh, in the future when 41st Street um, expands into the city uh, and having right in, right out kind of issues and having extra traffic. Uh, the my screen just went blank. The city staff has been working with the petitioner on this, and um, it, although we recommended two conditions originally, uh, there has been a little bit of a change in conditions, and I think the city staff uh, has those conditions to bring up uh, that m might work better for both the city and for the petitioner. So here's city. Albert Schmidt, City of Sioux Falls Planning and Development Services. So in your staff report, um, there's two conditions. Staff has worked um, with the applicant to try to look long-term at a solution that'll work best for them then and now to try to make it so it's easy to work forward through this process. Um, the only change we're recommending is in item number two, which currently reads, access for the new building eligibility site needs to connect to the abutting South Lana Drive. We'd like to replace that with two additional stipulations. The new number two would say removal and relocation of 44th Street exit or access with redevelopment. So again, removal and relocation of 41st Street access with redevelopment. And then number three would be provide a mutual access easement for the two properties around this area, 46. 810 and 46816 267th Street with redevelopment. With these new stipulations, we feel that in the meanwhile, the, the eligibility can be put there, a house can be put in place, but we've talked with the developer and the owner on this about the long-term goal of this, and realistically, it's redevelopment of this site, and we just want to make sure that with redevelopment, those accesses get pushed in the right spot so that the taxpayers of the county and the city don't have to pay for relocating those accesses at that time. Thank you. Is a petitioner here? Will you please come forward and state your name and address? Rick Dunlap, 46810 267th Street. And you're aware of the changes that the city has made, right? Yep. Okay. Yep. Is our goal is I'm one of the owners of the development. I grew up in the farmhouse. And uh, I want to move a build, building eligibility. My son is going to move into the old farmhouse. And potentially, I may build a house for my daughter. I live in the middle right now. Is our goal is as the city grows out that way, Lana is our last sewerable street. So our sewer is going to come from the northwest. So we're going to develop from 22nd back to 41st Street. So we roughly have 600 acres there to develop before we get back to 41st Street. Our goal would be eventually the gravel road there is going to be the next mile. 
and so we'll turn these acreages into commercial property when we redevelop so those those would disappear could be potentially 25 to 35 years down the road any questions for him not at this time is there anyone else to, that wishes to speak to this item no hands are raised okay commissioners we've got a long night ahead of us uh. let's uh, move forward here and uh, since no one is objecting to this I'll make a motion to uh, favor it this is Jeff okay madam chair Doug Odie will make a second on item 2 conditional use permit 21-24 I have a motion and second to approve conditional use permit 21-24 any further questions any madam further? chair Go ahead. This is Kurt Johnson. Besides, does that include the three conditions that the city staff mentioned? I'm yes. He's aware of that. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You bet. Uh, we'll. I do have a motion and a second. Um, it's a roll call vote. Jeff Arth. Aye. Adam. Aye. Doug. Aye. Mike. Aye. Becky. Aye. Motion has been approved on the county side, city side. Hi, city commissioners. Uh, conditional use permit 2124 has passed on the county side, and that is subject to uh, a couple of conditions that you have on paper as well as uh, a couple of revisions. Uh, do I have a motion on the city side? Ms. Luki, I'll make a motion with the three conditions. Second, Johnson. A motion and a second. Any further discussion on the city side? Mr. Chair, uh, Luki, just want to say this is a, just a normal transfer from one same property owner to another parcel and makes sense to me and it's great that they're thinking about the future and um, preparing for it. Thank you, Commissioner Luki. Anybody else? Hearing none, we'll take a roll call vote. Commissioner Irvin? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Kittums? No. Commissioner Lukey? Yes. Commissioner Nysis? Yes. Commissioner Paulson? Yes. The conditional use permit has passed on the city side. That item has been approved. You're free to, you're free to go. Move on to item number three, conditional use permit 21-25 to exceed 1,600 square feet of total accessory building area requesting 2,212 square feet on the property legally described as lot two, block two, country acres edition, uh, section 31, township 101 north, range 50 west. Uh, the petitioner is Anthony Anderson. He's also the property owner, uh, three miles west of Sioux Falls. Kevin? Uh, good evening again. Uh, this item is a request to have a, an accessory building greater than 1,600 square feet total as the property is only one acre in size. Uh, the request is for 2,212 feet. The petitioner is uh, planning on adding uh, approximately or 12 feet to the north of the garage or the front of the garage toward the driveway and nine feet on the east side of the garage towards the side yard. Uh, the, the petitioner will meet required setbacks, although the line on that particular map looks a little uh, off uh, because the required setback is three feet. The petitioner plans on staying back five feet from the property line. Uh, both the county and the city has reviewed this item and has recommended approval. Uh, and the county has recommended approval with the seven conditions listed. Um, and I can take any questions from there. Kevin? Guess not. Is the petitioner here? Will you please step forward and state your name and address? Uh, my name is Anthony Anderson. I live at 46625 Prairie Drive. 
Sioux Falls. Any questions for him? Madam Chair. Go ahead, Doug. Can I call you Tony? Hey, Tony. Um, have the neighbors had any concern about what you're doing or have they been made aware of it? Uh, they have been made aware. My next door neighbor whose trees are right there, uh, I talked to him just the other day and he said, good luck. Anyone else have any further questions? Okay. Um, anyone else care to speak to this item? No hands are raised. Okay. Commissioners? Madam Chair, this is Jeff. Um, in as much, again, as there is no opposition on this, I make a motion to approve. This is Becky, I second. Okay, I have a motion second to, to approve conditional use permit 21 25. Um, roll call vote. Jeff Barth? Aye. Adam? Aye. Doug? Aye. Mike? Aye. Becky? Aye. That is, has been approved on the county side. City side? City commissioners, uh, conditional use permit 2125 has been passed subject to seven uh, conditions on the county side. Uh, any motions uh, to approve uh, on the city side? So, Lukey, I'll make a, a motion for approval with the seven conditions. Johnson, second. Motion and a second. Do we have any further discussion on this one, commissioners? Hearing none, we'll take a roll call vote. Commissioner Urban? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Kittums? Yes. Commissioner Lukey? Yes. Commissioner Nysis? Yes. Commissioner Paulson? Yes. The conditional use permit has passed on the city side. Thank you. Since it has been approved, you're free to go. Thank you. Very much appreciated. Move on to item number four, conditional use permit 21-19 to allow sand and gravel mining on the properties legally described as the west half, the southeast quarter. There is an exception, H-1, and the southeast quarter, another exception, H-1 and the south half, the northwest quarter, and a portion of the southwest quarter, northeast quarter, all in section 17, Township 101 North, range 50 West. Petitioner is Jim Sukup, uh, property owner, Crusher Investment Company, one mile west of Sioux Falls. David. Good evening, Commission. David Heinold, County Planning Department. So conditional use permit 21-19 is to allow sand and gravel mining. Um, the property is outlined in red. As you can see, it's just north of South Dakota State Highway 42 um, on the west side of Sioux Falls. And I'm just going to go through the, the petitioner's request. You can kind of see the site plan on the map there that shows the hashed area that would be the proposed sand and gravel mining area. Um, in the application, there's listed that there's a 200-foot wide gas pipeline easement through there, which no mining would occur in that area. Um, there is a little bit of floodplain on the east side, but it appears that the site plan kind of barely touches that a little bit. It's further towards the southeast of that, the site plan image here. Um, there are no residences within the 1,000-foot setback, which is required by the zoning ordinance for the joint jurisdiction. Um, as you can should back up one second there. Um, as you can see to the, the southwest of the area, shaded with the hashed area, there's an existing rural residential development subdivision of about 60 to 70 some houses. Um, and then to the east, there's a, a growing area with residential to the in, inside city limits, and then as well as south of the state highway too. Um, and then the remainder of land around that is um, to the south is mostly agricultural and to the north is existing sand and gravel mining with some uh, lakes and some re reclaimed areas as well. Um, just going through some of the pictures that I took, just kind of take on a tour of the site. The petitioner included on the site plan as far as a proposed access to the site off the state highway, which is to be used as one of the, the proposed haul routes for the operation. Um, this is looking straight north towards where that, uh, that sand and gravel mining area would occur. Um, 
off in the distance. And this is looking towards the northeast. As you can see, the, the white rooftops off in the distance there, that's the housing development to the east um, of that floodplain area. And then this is looking back south um, towards one of the properties, residential properties, and then agricultural fields to the south beyond the tree belt. Um, this is from the north side on Sand Street, um, which is also one of the other proposed haul routes um, for the, the operation, which would take the, um, the haul route to the east towards what is Ellis Road or the county highway, um, which would, that would be the secondary haul route access. Um, this is taken a little bit further west. I believe this is a little bit further west of that driveway. Um, this is looking back down uh, towards the southwest of Sand Street towards some of the, there's a existing acreage to the west of 467th Avenue, the Township Road. Um, this is looking to the northwest. As you can see, 467th Avenue is in the background there, um, and Sand Street is where I'm standing. And so this is looking to the south of, you can kind of see the tree belt there. So the existing residential development would be on the south side of the tree belt. Um, where those homes are, over a thousand feet away from where the proposed area would be. Uh, one thing I would mention, the, the application listed in the narrative as far as providing buffers for screening for uh, proposed landscape, or the, the berms and landscaping, um, did mention using that existing tree belt on there, but staff recommends that the, the, applica the applicant put in the berm on their property, not using the, um, the adjacent property, their berm, um, using their landscaping, just of note. Um, this is looking towards the, I believe this is the location of where that, kind of where the, the gas pipeline easement would go. No, uh, back up a second. Um, this is just one of the site photos there. I think further on down the line, I'll show you a picture of the, the pipeline there. So this, back up. This is just showing Sand Street to the east of where the, the proposed haul route access would be. Um, and then this is looking to the north where the existing sand and gravel mining areas are. And then just continuing on to the east on Sand Street, just showing the um, the haul route access there. And then this is one of the existing operations of sand and gravel to the north of that site. And then right here is where that the gas pipeline easement would be. And then I'll flip it around and it should show the to the looking to the northwest there where that pipeline is currently located. And then a couple more photos of the site. This is just showing that pipeline again, that location. Um, so staff, so both the city and the county do recommend approval of the conditional use permit request. Um, there was one additional condition that was recommended to be added as far as the floodplain area that would exist um, is getting a floodplain development permit for any work that would be done in that area. Um, the staff does recommend approval with of the conditional use permit. Um, 21-19 with a total of 23 conditions. And I'll answer any questions if you have them. Any questions, Madam Chair, Jeff? In my reading of this, uh, this is Jeff, it looks like there's a 15 minute, a 15 year period where this extraction can happen. Is that the plan? That is correct, that all mining is concluded by January 1st, 2036, and that all reclamation of the site be completed by December 31st, 2037. Thank you. Any other questions for him? I guess not at this time. Is a petitioner here? Will you please come forward and state your name and address? Good evening, Jim Sokup, 8900 West Lakeside Drive, Sioux Falls. <clears throat> um, excuse me. Uh, I'm obviously answer any questions. Uh, I am fine with the conditions that were uh, put on here, the 23 or 24 if you add that one. Um, number 11 is the only one that I, it says topsoil shall remain on site and use 
in final reclamation. I agree with that except for in the mining area itself will be a lake. I don't want to put the topsoil back in the lake. So that would be the only part that I, if we could state it, any area outside of the, you know, of the water area to receive six inches adequate amount of topsoil, something like that, I would prefer something like that. Otherwise, I'm going to have a lot of excess topsoil because I'm not, I don't want to put it in the 75 acre area because that will be underwater at that point. That's the only thing that I can add to this. Any questions for him? Jeff? A uh, question for Luke. He, uh, okay, go ahead. He cut out there, so I just wanted to know what number 11, what he was stating with water. It says, uh, number 11 says, topsoil shall remain on site and be used in final reclamation. And I am fine with that except for in the water area, which will be a 75-acre body of water similar to what you see uh, on the site maps in the area. Um, obviously, I don't want to put topsoil back in the new water feature. So I would ask that we could change that to say the areas outside of the water feature to receive adequate topsoil, six inches of, you know, whatever you think is appropriate. That's pretty common, six inches is. Okay, go ahead, Jeff. Jeff, go ahead. Yeah, this is Jeff. Uh, will this be a 12-month year operation? No. Um, we, are, we have operations in the area. Uh, we always say if we can make it till Thanksgiving, we're real happy. And, you know, this year we're getting an early start, and it looks like about on April 1st is when we're kind of hitting the ground. Might be real minor activity in the winter, but very, very limited. Anyone else have any questions for him? I guess not at this time. David? David, can you address that item number 11? How you would change that? What, what, what you would like it to read? So, David Heinold, condition number 11. Um, I guess the way kind of trying to write it down at the same time. Um, I think the petitioner mentioned something about the six inches of topsoil, or I believe it was six inches of topsoil, um, if I recall correctly. The, so the area that is proposed to be the final reclamation for the, the water reservoir, um, if you were to change the wording of it to reflect the request for only using the topsoil in the areas outside of the proposed water areas, um, whether that's, whether they end up doing the full 75 or 40 acres of water reservoir, um, maybe you just keep it at areas outside of proposed water storage areas or something like that. Okay. Rather than keep putting a Scott, amount. you want to address that? Yep. Okay. Scott Anderson again. I think that maybe just be easiest to have number 11 read as follows. Okay. Topsoil shall remain on the site and shall be used in final reclamation on non-water areas. Perfect. You want to come forward again, Mr. Sokup? Or, yep. or you can make your own condition. I'm sorry, Jim Sokup. Go ahead. Again, um, the problem with that is I'm going to have a lot of excess topsoil. So when you say it shall remain on site, that means all the topsoil shall remain on site. I'm fine leaving all of it on site except for the, the area in the water feature. I'll have way too much topsoil on this site if I don't do something with it. If, if I take 75 acres of topsoil and try to spread it out over the rest, um, it's going to be excessive. Just put the word enough. Enough topsoil shall remain on the site. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Is there anyone else that would like to speak to this item? 
Any hands raised at all? Oh, over here. Oh, sorry. Will you please come forward, ma'am? State your name and address. Name is uh, Monica Pierce, and I live at 46703 Snowberry Street, Sioux Falls. Um, just to clarify, the the red is are the routes that they're going to be extracting and traveling to remove the gravel. Is that correct? And I guess he's shaking his head no. The petition. So, I guess um, are, is there intent to when they remove the gravel, are they taking 467th Street past the subdivision? Okay, is that the question? So you have, yes. He'll have to address it. Uh, you have any more questions for him? Is that the main one? That, that's really the main one right now. Okay. We'll have him come back up and address that, okay? Jim Sokup. Um, number 20, no trucks are allowed on 467th Avenue. I knew that was a big concern, and I am totally fine. Um, our routes are actually going to go to the east, so there will not be traveling along the concerned route. Okay. Did he address your question, ma'am? Um, yes. Um, the question has been addressed. Um, so I guess what is what is in place to prevent the trucks from going up for just to, to clarify what's preventing the trucks from coming up for 67. Okay, we'll have to address that. Jim soak up for those that are on zoom. A um, couple things we the haul routes are given to us and our routes are always going into the city. I, excuse me, 99% of the time, our work is in the city of Sioux Falls, which is going east. So the quickest route, in, in order for us to go on 467th, we would actually be doing a lot of backtracking, going out and around. So there's really no reason for it. I certainly could put a sign up saying truck, truck route only. I've done that on my other operations, if that would help. But again, there really is no reason we should be trying to go out come back around, it's, it would be like going in a big circle almost for us to get right back to where we started in order to go on 467. Can I ask you a question quick? Sure. Um, regards to trucking, will it be only your trucks that will be in this area or will you contract with other individuals for hauling also? For the most part, it is typically ours. We do have rented trucks like we'll hire trucks to haul for us and put them on a designated route with us. So they show up at our shop in the morning, we give them the routes, things like that. That's the way my operations have been done in the past. So we don't retail, if you will. Okay, okay. thanks. Anyone else care to address this item? No hands are raised. Okay. No one else? Commissioners? Madam Chair, if I may. Sure. Um, Mike. You know, it appears we have a pretty good plan in place here. I appreciate the concern um, from the neighbor, and uh, I think uh, there's some due, good due diligence done uh, putting the staff board together with the conditions that were um, listed. So, and also understand there are a number of gravel pits out there already. I guess I'd make a motion to approve. I'll second that motion, and I would say that there are a lot of gravel pits out there, and uh, there's always trouble on some of the roads there where trucks are going hither and yon. Do our best. Okay. I have a motion in a second to approve conditional use permit 21 19. Uh, on the county side, we'll do a roll call vote. Jeff? Uh, I got a question. Oh, pardon me. Is that changing number 11? This is Lukey. Oh, yes. Uh, to enough to remain on the site to be used in final reclamation on non water areas? Yes. Yes. That was the, okay. my intended second. <laughs> did you get your question answered, Larry? Yeah, I did. Thank you. 
Okay. We'll continue. Um, we have a roll call vote. Jeff? Aye. Doug? Aye. Sorry. Adam? Aye. Mike? Aye. Becky? Aye. Items have been approved on the county side. First conditional use permit 2119 uh, has been approved on the county side. It has 24 conditions and number 11 has been revised as stated. Do I have a motion on the city side? I'll make a motion for approval. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion on the city side? Hearing none, we will take a roll call vote. Commissioner Irvin? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Kittums? Yes. Commissioner Lukey? Yes. Yes. Commissioner Paulson. Yes. The conditional use permit has passed on the city side. If it has been approved, you're free to go. Thank you. So move on to item number five. It's a preliminary subdivision plan, Shatters Fourth Edition, to allow resubdivision of existing Shatters tracks all in section twenty eight, Township one hundred two North, Range fifty West. Petitioners, are, let me. Uh, it's two miles west of Sioux Falls. It looks like staff report is going to be city planning. Yeah, Albert Schmidt, City of Sioux Falls Planning and Development Services again. Thanks for having me out here, guys. Um, so this location, you have our typical staff report in front of you here. Uh, just a little background for you. I'll try to keep this quick and moving forward for you. But um, with any subdivision ordinance in the joint area, it goes through the City of Sioux Falls process but comes before this board. So that's why... We take in the application, we take the fee in, and then we run it through, get comments. So in this instance, we get comments from our city staff, in addition to the county staff. So with that in mind, this is a proposal to kind of expand an existing one out there, not changing the number of eligibility, just kind of changing the overall size of each lot, and then at making it more connected for future development in the area. It's approximately 24.92 acres, currently zoned A1 agriculture, not developed currently. That will continue to happen here soon with approval of this. Uh, the next step here after this would be elected official hearing. So we'll do a first reading, then they'll have a second reading for that side. So we've done an analysis on the existing um, land uses, nothing out there ex existing, so there's no compatibility issues to be noted at this point in time. And then our standard infrastructure comments were done for the review. We did do agency view review comments. Some were brought in first. Since this staff report has been brought in front of you, they have been revised and there are no outstanding comments at this point in time from any city or county staff members. Uh, again, I promised you a quick staff report. That's my staff report. If you have any questions, I will take it. Any questions? Thank you. <laughs> Commissioners? There's no one else to speak on this item. Oh, sorry. Is there anyone else here to speak to this item? Any hands raised out there, David? No hands are raised. Okay. Sorry. I'll volunteer. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Joel Engel with Hard Lemmy Development, 5735 East 41st Street. Uh, I think Albert summed it up pretty well. It's a pretty simple request. There's eight platted lots there now. We're going to keep it as eight platted lots. We're just going to make them a little bit bigger. And, and going through the process with the preliminary plan, we're just uh, kind of beating down that path. So I'd be happy to answer any questions if you have any. I guess, Madam Chair, I, I, go ahead, Adam. One question. This is Adam Warhauser. Um, the road going in there, the main road, is that going to be paved or anything like that? Is that and who maintain, who will take care of that then? Uh, the development itself, well, we'll have to set up a road district to okay. actually care for it, but it will be an asphalt road. It will be. Mm -hmm. be kind of like a homeowner association kind of a deal then, just take yeah, care we'll, of it we'll, to maintain we're gonna, it? The preference would be to set it up as a road district. Okay. In principle, where the, you know, each of the eight lot owners would, would contribute their share of annual expense on that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions for him? Madam Chair, I just... Uh, Madam Chair, I'll come. I have one. I have one. Um, there was a note in the staff report about uh, a follow-up uh, conversation with the neighbors, and I was wondering if that took place about the, uh, the um, Collector Street location. Yes, it did. This is Joel Engel again. 
I did talk with, that comment was generated due to the landowner to the south. Uh, city engineering staff asked that we have a conversation with them just to make sure that the location we're proposing for this Shatter Avenue didn't conflict with any of their future plans, and it did not. Okay, thank you. Yes. Anyone else have any questions for him? Thank you. Thank you. Commissioners? Madam Chair, Doug Ody, I uh, recommend approval of item number five, the preliminary subdivision plan. Adam Morehouser, I'll second that. Okay, I have a motion and second to approve the preliminary subdivision plan. Any other further comments or questions? Roll call vote. Jeff? Aye. Adam? Aye. Doug? Aye. Mike? Aye. Becky? Aye. Item has been approved on the county side. Commissioners, right. this preliminary subdivision plan has been approved on the county side. Do I have a motion on the city side? Motion to approve, uh, Johnson. Uh, second, Lucy. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion on this item? Take a roll call vote. Commissioner Irvin? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Kittums? Yes. Commissioner Lukey? Yes. Commissioner Nysis? Yes. Commissioner Paulson? Yes. The preliminary subdivision plan has been approved on the city side. Thank you. You're free to go if that one was approved. Uh, we have no old business. Madam Chair, I, I'd, I'd like to just address uh, my brothers and sister on the uh, city planning. Go ahead. Um, last month, uh, we uh, went ahead and uh, on our side and approved that, uh, that uh, private airstrip plan. And I know you folks uh, did not approve it. And I heard later that uh, you all wanted to defer it. And I've been on many, many Zoom meetings, and when you're not present in the room, it's very difficult to assert yourself. And I, I, I just uh, would encourage you to speak up and raise a little heck if we're rushing too quickly, uh, because we are, we do want to respond and work uh, with you hand in hand. Thanks, Jeff. Since we have no old business. We have no new business. I'll Move adjournment. Randall, second. I have a motion, a second to adjourn. Jeff? Aye. Adam? Aye. Doug? Aye. Mike? Aye. Becky? Aye. Move to adjourn on the county side. City side? Commissioners, do I have a motion to adjourn on the city side? Move to adjourn, Johnson. We have a motion and a second. We'll do a roll call vote. Commissioner Irvin? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Kittums? Yes. Commissioner Ludke? Yes. Commissioner Nysis? Yes. Commissioner Paulson? Yes. We are adjourned on the city side. Thank you, city planning. Thanks. Okay, we'll start with the County Planning Commission.